Hello and welcome everybody. It's your boy. He's finally back. I know that your boy Dumps has been AFK for a few weeks now. I will be releasing a video explaining where I have been, but we got to get back to the content. Uh, and so we're going to do that with some scores on the doors. Now, the Pinnacle Cup Championship, I probably wouldn't have done a scores on the doors for. Uh, just because it's not the most well-attended event. There's only a handful of like top 10-ish, top 20 teams here. But I attended the event. I went to it. I was there in the flesh, covering shit, doing interviews, just generally being a legend. So I thought, well, I mean, I better do a scores on the doors for the tournament. Bam. Let's get into it. So obviously we're kicking things off with MIBR and uh, yeah, pretty disappointing for MIBR at this event. Admittedly, they got somewhat of a tough draw having to play big and then heroic. Heroic losing that match uh, to Fnatic in the opener meant that MIBR got like a pretty rough lower bracket game. However, they weren't really competitive uh, in any of the games they played. I mean, that Inferno game's okay, I guess, but... They started on CT, so getting 16-11 is not as impressive, um, particularly considering uh, the current meta. So yeah, really not that impressed with MIBR's performances. Um, I was expecting more from them. I think MIBR are pretty good. I think Cello, I think Yota, and I think Brennazan are all pretty good players. Even Turtle, I think, is like a guy who's not a clear star player for them, is actually pretty good. MIBR are one of the teams that's come out of, like, the Americas. That isn't Furia, obviously, that I've been most excited about. Um, just seeing them at Blast at the start of the year, they look pretty good. And, and seeing flashes of, like, pretty good play from them, um, including during the Major. I mean, I guess we can say that they added um, Brennazan in place of Woody literally just before this event, so we can let them off. But I think it's got to be a C-. minus. Um, I'm not going to give them a D because they had just made a roster swap and it's not as if they've got like a plethora of experience playing in Europe under their belt, but they have enough to say that going out of the tournament without a map win, without really being that competitive is slightly disappointing. So C plus it is for Mibber. Next up, we've got EG Party Astronauts. And I mean, again, I think it has to be a C minus not taking a map off of finest and not being more competitive in this series in general is probably the most disappointing thing for EG Party Astronauts. Um, I think Jonji looks the best of them all. In general, outside of Jonji, they seem to struggle individually at these events full stop. Um, there's just not enough like fragging to really even be able to examine their play and like say, what do we think you guys need to do to get better? I know that sounds really reductionist, but there just, there just needs to be a little bit more, I think, from the individuals before we can then start saying, right, this is what EG party astronauts need to do to get better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say C- minus again. I don't think there was any expectation they would get out of the group. Um, you know, with Imperial in it and Astralis in it, they probably weren't going to be better than either of these two teams. And Finest did come off of a, a pinnacle win and have looked pretty good recently with their, not noob in the last sort of like three months, new roster. But still, they weren't as competitive as I think they would have liked, particularly in that Finest series. And so, yeah, C- minus for Easy Party Astronauts, but... This was all about experience. I was speaking to DJ at the event, and this is very much about experience for them getting to play, getting to come to Europe. So um, maybe with that org support behind them now, they just got the org in before the event. We can start to see more growth from the party astronauts roster. But for now, for this event, C minus. Just a just a tinge disappointing. Now we move on to the new look fanatic roster and. Actually, I think I'm going to give this new look Fnatic roster a B minus. They beat Heroic in their opener, considering they literally were playing with Forrest as a stand in, two brand new players. Roster's a mess. Mezzi just took up the in game leadership role. This was actually pretty impressive. They were competitive in this series against Big, and they took a map off of Big. As you can see, they took. Uh, they took Big's pick of Nuke in pretty impressive fashion with a very chonky CT side. And then they weren't completely blown out on the other maps. They start T here and then manage to make something of a game of it. 
They start T again here. Kind of rough to start T on two maps, particularly. I think starting T on Vertigo can be a bit, like, wishy-washy. But in the end, they put together a decent half, and it was their CT side that let them down. But all things considered, uh, if we also take a look... And if we also take a look at this heroic series, which knocked them out of the event, um, again, very, very competitive. They narrowly, miss, uh, narrowly missed out on Mirage. They narrowly lost Overpass. Again, we're generally competitive with Heroic, who are still a very good team. And even though they've just swapped out Refresh, obviously still one of the better teams in the world. I'd say a top five team. So yeah, I'm going to give Fnatic a B-. minus. Um, I think... I think they really had a chance to go through this group considering that they beat Heroic in the opener. So that's probably the main reason I'm a little bit like, ah, you know, otherwise I'd give them a B, probably just a straight up B. Um, but yeah, generally good signs from this new Fnatic roster. I like the look of it. I like the balance of roles within the team. I think this Fnatic roster is going to be pretty decent. I'm surprised Fnatic can manage to put together such a decent roster. I have criticized Fnatic of lacking uh, ambition and I still think that point holds, you know, just basically being a selling team pretty much if you want to talk about a football equivalent but what they have managed to put together probably a little bit conveniently considering what was going on with Copenhagen Flames at the time it's pretty good it's pretty good can't complain b minus good job Fnatic let's see more of it next up we're looking at Imperial now Imperial have in general been pretty disappointing since the major they have kind of sucked kind of fallen back into potentially the kind of level you'd expect of them pre-major. I think they overperformed at the major, and I think we're starting to see that that definitely was the case. On some level, it's understandable because Imperial are a bunch of guys who've been there, done that, and it doesn't surprise me that some of these online and lesser tournaments, they're struggling to motivate. I would suspect that a struggle to be as motivated as they were for the major is probably the main reason. And considering a lot of these guys are like getting towards their 30s, yeah, it's not so surprising that the level just isn't there consistently. Having said that, I mean, they did beat Finest. They took a map off Astralis and were competitive in that series. But getting 2 0 by Finest here... I would have expected them to make this out of the group, so I think it's got to be at least a D. I'm going to give them a D plus because it wasn't atrocious, but <sighs> no, it's a D. It, it was bad. It, it, they probably should have gotten out of this group considering they had party astronauts who were pretty much guaranteed to not go through and then finest. Like if they'd have been maybe in this group instead of big or instead of heroic, I'd have a little bit more sympathy for them, but I think they should have gone through this group. So D... Fallen and the guys are probably never going to be that great at these smaller tournaments. I think it's probably the bigger events where you look at them and say they're probably going to be a little bit better than their expected level at the big events, maybe a little bit worse than their expected level at these events. I think that's just how it will go for Imperial. D. Now we get into the top four, the teams that made playoffs, and we start with Finest, who are getting an A. They're just getting an A. They recovered from a loss to Imperial, a pretty competitive one on Dust2, and they had their chances in this map. Swept aside pa 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 party astronauts easily. And then also, to be honest, pretty convincingly swept aside Imperial. And on one of the maps being Overpass, which is Imperial's best map. And I think the map that Imperial are the most dangerous on. So absolute fair play to Finest. Also, what a fucking bunch of great guys. Really friendly dudes. Spoke to Kriaz a little bit. Spoke to Anarchez a little bit. Spoke to Shox a little bit. They were all super fucking lovely dudes. Awesome guys. Made me big fans of this team straight away. I'm going to be keeping an eye on Finest from now on. I think they are a team that can definitely crack into that top 20 and maybe start to get some invites to some of these tournaments where they can showcase themselves a little bit more against Tier 1. Um, and even here, taking a map off Heroic in this series, weren't very competitive on the other two maps, but it's fair enough. This is the first time I think that the finest guys had kind of, for a lot of them, gotten to a stage full stop. Uh, f most of them, pretty much all of them, getting to a stage for at least years as well. Um, it's fair enough, but taking a map off Heroic, getting through that group. Yeah, all I can say for finest is really well played. And Arquez looked like a really, really saucy Orper. Shox was like amazing with some of these lurk plays and things he was doing on these maps. And he's not normally their like star player. And just, yeah, the balance of roles on the team looked pretty good as well. I think Plesson was probably the guy where I think he was kind of the X factor almost. If Plesson had a good game, they normally win one. If Plesson had a bad game, they normally lost. 
but yeah, just an A. Great performance from Finest. Uh, and really looking forward to see what they can do in the future. Next up, we had Big, who came third because of the sort of almost double GSL style. Like they did a GSL group and then almost a GSL playoff bracket. Um, a big were outright like third place. I don't know. Big, I mean, they topped their group. They did what they had to do. I mean, getting to the playoffs was probably the expectation, so they get at least a C, I would have said. But then they didn't really get much done in the playoffs. They did have to play with Keto. Yeah, I think we probably just got to give them a C. They did what was expected of them. Then they had to get rid of Farvam due to illness. Get rid of, you know what I mean, play without him. Yeah, big, big just get that. Big get their, uh, big get their C. Yeah, big, big, just get a C. It, it was, it was, they did what they had to do. They did what was expected of them. Then they didn't really get to show their true face in the playoffs. Not really much you can say about big, but they get a C for this event. As a general point, I expect big to improve and to be like better than they were with Keto in the roster. Just in general with this Farvan Crimbo version of the lineup. But I think they probably need a little bit of time. I still don't think Farvan looks fully settled. I still think he is struggling to find his niche within the team a little bit. But Crimbo is getting better and better and looks great. Looks like a fantastic addition. So I expect Big will start to look like a really solid top 10 team at some point. It's just a matter of time, I feel like, with Big. Now we have to talk about the top two. Uh, and first off, we have to talk about Astralis. Looked pretty good going through the event. Put Big to bed, as was probably to be expected, considering Big were playing with a stand-in in the form of Keto. Uh, and then they weren't all that competitive in this final. Oh, I don't know. I guess Astralis making the final is a good. We'll give them probably a... a at the start of the event, would I have been expecting Astralis to make the final? Pre-event, I would have said it's between them, Big and Heroic, who will make the final. And they should be top three, and they were. Considering Big came into this with a stand-in, it, it does take a bit of the credit away from Astralis, not through any fault of their own. In general, they looked a bit better. Their T-sides looked a bit better throughout the event. But I still think they're overly reliant on Blame F, as can be seen by the fact Blame F. Apart from in the final, he kind of had a not a great final, but like carries this series, you know, was MVP of the tournament despite losing in the final. And they still don't seem to have quite found like the balance of roles on their team. I think Blame F takes up so much space and it doesn't always allow Config to do what he wants to do. I think Farley is a good player, but is struggling to find his niche. He looked like he was slowly getting better with each tournament, and now he's kind of looking lost a bit more often again. So I don't know with Astralis. I'll give him a C plus because they did make the final despite the circumstances, but they didn't really exceed expectations. Like they didn't have like a super convincing, amazing run through the tournament. You know, they dropped a map to Imperial here. You know, they got taken pretty close on dust two by big with a stand in and then they weren't that competitive in the final yeah c plus astralis you know i'm still not sold on this five-man lineup but i don't see the obvious change to make considering valda is out there on the market i would probably swap zipnix for valda even though zip looked pretty decent at this tournament by his standards yeah not so sure about astralis man in general but they get c plus for this tournament and last but certainly not least, taking home a big fat 150 smackaroonies is Heroic. Now, what can we say for Heroic at this tournament? Um, they probably met expectations by winning it. So by my own, like, scoring system, you probably only, you know, they at least get a C. I'm not going to say you can only give them a C, but they at least get a C. They were the pre-tournament favourites. They did what they had to do. They recovered pretty well from an early loss to Fnatic and then you know, only dropped one more map throughout the tournament. So in some senses, I actually give them some added credit for the fact that they managed to come back from a setback. They showed a lot of resilience. And I think Heroic's fortitude is probably what we're questioning when it comes to like big playoff games in LAN events. This was obviously a smaller LAN. It was in some sense on home turf. I know it was played in Sweden, but if you were there in the arena for the final, it was. It seemed to be mostly Astralis and Heroic fans. I don't know if it was lots of Danes specifically, but 
it, and it was favoured heavily, I think, towards fero heroic. Yeah? It was favoured towards heroic. There were more heroic fans than Astralis in the arena. So it kind of swings in roundabouts as to whether you give them more or less credit for this run. I'm going to give them a B because they won the tournament. They showed great resilience to come back through that lower bracket. Only dropped a map to finest after the whole debacle of losing to Fnatic in the opener. And the map they dropped to finest, like it was kind of finest were like particularly shocks played like on that vertigo, played like a bit of a life game. He was playing out of his fucking mind. And then, yeah, after that, Heroic got the job done, basically. They did what they needed to do. Um, refresh again was disappointing. Uh, if you look throughout these, he's basically the lowest rated player in like every series. And that's why hip Refresh is gone. I'll probably talk about that in a separate video at some point. But Refresh just wasn't getting the job done on LAN. So yeah, I think, you know, they won the tournament. They did what they needed to do. They got to get a B. I think they got to get a B. Um, particularly considering that this was heroic breaking that curse that hoodoo that they hadn't managed to win a LAN event I think this will do a lot for their confidence I think this says a lot about the team that they are at least capable of winning on LAN in some sense even if it's not the biggest LAN in the biggest arena it's still a LAN win and it still counts that's all from me on the Pinnacle Cup Championship scores on the doors remember let me know if you agreed with my scores or not. Was I harsh? Was I generous? Or was I, as I probably was, just correct? I'm always correct. And do all the liking and, and the subscribing and like telling your friends about me and all that stuff. If you didn't like the video, please be nice. I've been gone for a while. Peace out, boys and girls.